Ahoy, me mateys! Today we be taking a gander at Tiny Epic Pirates, the newest game from the crew over at Gamelin Games. I'm Captain Maya. Welcome aboard the Board Game Coffee. You're not going to do the voice the whole time, are you? I, I might, Brittany. I might. Ugh. Get back here this instant! Oh. Thank you. Oh, I love you too, Nick. I couldn't have done it without you. Thank you. Thank you. Arr. Tiny Epic Pirates is a swashbuckling, competitive rondelle for one to four scurvy dogs looking to sail the open sea. Okay, well, that's enough of that. But I want, when I want to be a pirate. I know, and I wanted to marry a mature adult man, but we don't get what we want. Uh, my patch. This is Tiny Epic Pirates. Now, you should know that everything you see here is simply a prototype and does not necessarily represent the final look of the components. These boats, for example, won't be generated on a home 3D printer. The port tokens won't be assembled by me with random pieces of crafting material. And these legendary tokens won't be nearly as good looking. In Tiny Epic Pirates, you are the captain of your very own pirate ship, sailing the seven seas with your crew of buccaneers, plundering unsuspecting settlements, and scuttling merchant ships, all in the name of booty. Um, that's, that's, not, that's not what I meant. Excuse me, miss. Da. Seriously, it's not, it's not the kind of booty, uh, I meant like pirate, like pirate booty, like treasure, that's not the, not the sexy kind. You are walking on thin ice. As fun as it sounds to be a pirate, there are those who will disapprove of your piratey ways. Apparently, sinking ships and tormenting the locals is frowned upon in these parts, so keep an eye out for the wife. <laughs> I mean, the Navy. <laughs> keep an eye out for the Navy. The Navy. Because <laughs> these guys really know how to put a damper on your pirate party. Tiny Epic Pirates is played in turns. First, you select your captain's order, then you sail your ship to your desired destination. Once you get there, you execute said order. There's a little bit more to it than that, such as reassigning your deck hands, but that's the long and short of it. The goal of Tiny Epic Pirates is to be the first player to bury three treasure chests. Because, as we all know, the key to being a good pirate is a strong investment portfolio. Alright, let me bring up your case file. Ah, here it is. Buried doubloons, is that right? Arr. Excellent. Are you looking to set up something for retirement? Arr. Okay. I'm sure we can help you with that. Let's just gather some additional information. Other than the buried gold, do you have any other, um, investments? No. Okay. Are you familiar with our 401k options? No. Okay. Does your place of business offer any form of pension? We have a prank. Not exactly what I was meaning by that. Um, do you know what a pension is? No. Okay. How about dependents? Family members who depend on you for income? Maybe a wife? Yeah, I didn't think so. Children. Ah, Polly. Ah, great. And Polly is your... Pirate. Shh. I think he likes you. Mm. Burying treasure is fun and all, but there's more to Tiny Epic Pirates than just putting your life savings in a hole. I mean, if that's all it was, it wouldn't be all that epic, now would it? It's everything leading up to that that sends the shiver up me tippers. On the table, Tiny Epic Pirates will look something like this. A randomly generated 4x4 map will serve as your main board, and on it will be randomly placed search tokens that you can discover on your journey. These markers here identify the destination of the merchant ships. And from time to time, you'll pull booty blindly from this bag and draw additional crew members from this row, maximum four per ship. And this here is the market map, 
which indicates the current worth of your booty, as well as the strength value of each merchant ship. Now, what's cool about the market is how the value of your goods fluctuates. Each time you make a trade, the value of the good you traded will drop down to the bottom of the value chart, increasing the value of everything else. But as cool as I might think the market is, the true heart of the game is here at the helm. It's here that you'll command your loyal crew of sea dogs. L loyal, that is, until they, until they mutiny, then it's all heartache and, and, and broken friendships. Birthdays are super awkward. Now, I gotta say, I'm really digging this whole command your crew from the helm of your ship thing that the Gamelin game guys have going on here. You see, the helm is loaded up with randomly placed commands which you perform in order once per turn. A variable rondelle, if you will. It's an elegant little system which I quite enjoy. By limiting your choices, it forces you to think ahead and plan your future turns. Now, although you are limited to the orders that lay in front of you, you are not limited to the first available option. Let me explain. Let's say your next available command is plunder, but you feel that maybe trading at the market is a better fit. But unfortunately, that option is three turns away. Not a problem. If you ever want to skip ahead on your command wheel, simply call up some deckhands, lay them out in front of you, and hop over to your desired action like a demeaning game of leapfrog. Now, as cool as it is to walk on the back of your underlings to get what you want, there are consequences to your actions. First off, each deckhand you assign to your command wheel is a deckhand not working the ship, which means you're losing out on bonuses, but we'll get into that a little later. Secondly, see this line here? Well, the faster you zip around the wheel, the sooner you're going to cross it. And when you do, all the non-player ships will start sailing around the board. At the start, the merchant ships are little more than floating piñatas, just sailing across the sea, waiting to spill their candy all over your bow. So we're really not worried about them. I mean, sure, they put up a fight, but at least you have a chance. It's these a-holes that keep us looking over our stern. The Navy, the jerks of the sea, putting the poop in your poop dick. Ew, gross. Thing is, see, when these guys show up to attack, they never lose. Never. And what makes them even more terrifying is that it's the player to your right that controls their movement. And if the player to your right is as jerky as the player to my right, hey, then you better choose your commands wisely. Speaking of commands, Segway! Here's a rundown of all the commands available to you. Plunder. Release innocent villagers from the encumbrance of their goods and wealth. Trade. Pass off said plunder as your own, wrap it up in a sad story about your sick mother, and take in a little coin for your troubles. Crew up. Improve the ranks of your ship by bringing on board skilled seamen to improve the functions of your ship and its crew. And if you're feeling up to it, have yourself a mutiny by flipping over your captain card to its opposite side, revealing a brand new captain with brand new abilities. You can only do that once, so please, mutiny responsibly. Don't drink and coo. Hideout. A nice out-of-the-way vacation spot for you and your crew to cash in some well-earned R&R, avoid any unwanted attention from the authorities, and realign the crew's future career goals with the needs of the ship. Search. Scour the vast blue sea and plunge into its icy depths in search of treasure and other wondrous things, like, like movement, like, like movement assist tokens. I. I really didn't know how to work that into my whole, my whole spiel there. Attack! Battle across the open seas with cannons and, and stuff. That, that whole movement token thing really took the wind out of my sails. Just try it again. The moment's lost. But- It's lost! I'll do it straight. Attack allows you to attack other ships and boost your legendary status. And in the case of merchant ships, earn yourself some well-earned booty.
How well you perform in battle is strongly influenced by your crew cards and your deck hands. And it's a fairly easy concept to grasp. Let me demonstrate. When attacking, first thing you're going to do is roll your dice. Then count up how many times the number on your dice match up to the dice depicted on your crew cards. Then add them up. So in this case, I scored four hits. Once that's done, add on any additional bonuses you might have. Like this spot on your helm, which adds plus one damage to your attack for each deck hand in this location. So in this case, we add an additional two points for having two deck hands manning the cannons. Oh, and if you have any of these surefire cannon tokens lying around, in the case of this prototype, they're depicted by these gray cylinders, you can discard them for a one-time use to flip a die to the side of your choice. Your opponent then does the same thing, and the player with the highest number earns a boost in their legendary status, which offers up some cool rewards such as gold and improvements to your ship, making it faster and mightier. By the time you reach the legendary status of Dread Pirate, you'll be a force to be reckoned with. You know what? While we're down here, I, um, I gotta talk about these ships. How cool is it that they carry these little cubes to represent your booty? I mean, first item meeples, now this? I love this. I mean, any game that lets me slot cubes into little cube holders has automatically won a little place in my heart. It's just so satisfying. could do this all day. Now, last but not least, let's talk about the deckhands. These poor bastards breaking their backs below deck, working for an ungrateful captain who only calls them up to use them as stepping stones to reach his next command. Some people. Other than helping the captain zip around his helm, they also serve as bonuses based on their deck assignment, which you can see here. Assigning a deckhand to the rigging station will increase your ship's movement speed by one. Assign them to cannons and you'll deal one additional damage in battle. Place them here and you'll earn one extra coin when you cross over the ship line. Now, if you double up on any of these spaces, you'll get double the bonus triple up and you'll get triple the bonus and, and so on. But leave any of these assignment spaces empty and you'll get no bonuses from that location. Oh, and you're probably wondering what the deal is with this repair space. Well, when you lose a battle or enter stormy waters, your deckhands will get jostled right out of their assigned spaces into the repair space. At which point they're pretty much stuck there unless the captain takes a hideout action and calls them up to the helm for a game of leapfrog, or takes a reassigned bonus action. What I like about Tiny Epic Pirates is the variety of gameplay it offers without being overly complicated, yet still offering up enough brain-stimulating gameplay which I come to expect from the Tiny Epic series. So if this sounds like a game you're interested in, check them out on Kickstarter starting May 19th, 2020. Thanks for joining us. If you like this video and you want to see more, subscribe to our channel. It's the best way to keep up to date with everything we do here at Board Game Coffee. But if you want to see more right now, we got plenty of videos to choose from. And if that's not enough, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I'm Mark Maya, and this is Board Game Coffee. And remember, have fun, keep gaming, be social. See you next week.